Anyone who has ever even had a thought about making their own game has without a doubt run into one main problem, math, or more specifically, linear algebra. If you so much as Google linear algebra, you are bombarded with cryptic formulas and scribbles of what seems to be the thesis for a master's degree in mathematics. This is where the problem arises. An abundance of linear algebra resources is far from a bad thing, but for someone who is curious about game development, this can make it seem very daunting. This is even more problematic when the reality is, out of all the topics that fall under the umbrella of linear algebra, your average game developer will only encounter a very small subset. Of these, one stands out above the rest for me. That one is vectors and the operations you can perform on them, like adding and subtracting. There's a lot of incredible things you can do with even the most basic of operations regarding vectors, so I'd like to get you to the point where you can experiment for yourself. First off, what is a vector? I'm sure many of you have had a section on this in school, but if you're anything like me, it didn't really do much in terms of understanding them. If that sounds familiar, I want you to forget about how it was taught and approach this with a fresh mind. Starting off, we'll be focusing exclusively on 2D right now, but all of these concepts can be expanded to 3D with a varying amount of effort. A vector is simply a collection of two numbers, typically represented as x and y. These numbers can be either positive or negative, whole number or decimal. Looking at a grid, we can plot a point using the x and y components essentially the same as a coordinate. But what's the point? We can move it around by changing either the x or y or both, but this doesn't really do anything for us, and it's a bit boring. Instead, we can use this vector as the position of a character. You may see where this is going, but this is exactly how every 2D game you've ever played knows where your character is. So in the case of position data, a vector is essentially just a set of coordinates. And now for the first, and in my opinion, the most important operation for a vector, addition. Along with being the most important, it's the easiest to explain. If we have a vector a and a vector b, we can just add both of their x's, then both of their y's, and that's our resulting vector. It doesn't get much simpler than that. If you're more of a visual learner, you can think of adding two vectors as sticking the start of one vector onto the end of another. It also doesn't matter which way you do this, as you will always end up with the same resulting vector. Let's revisit our character from earlier. We were moving him around by changing his position directly, but we can also store a velocity vector. Then, at set intervals, we can simply add his velocity to his position, and set the resulting vector as his new position. This is the basics of movement in video games. Following addition, it only makes sense to move into subtraction. Subtraction is very much the same. Vector A minus vector B is simply the result of subtracting X and Y of the two vectors. However, it's more important to note, subtraction of vectors does matter about the order, and will create two vectors based on which one is first. On paper, the resulting vector from subtraction doesn't seem to be very useful, and it doesn't change if we visualize it from 0, 0. However, if we instead show the vector at the end of A or B, we can see that vector A minus vector B essentially creates a vector pointing from B to A. If we reverse the order, it will instead start at A and point at B. In games, this can be used to either get a vector between the player and an object to move along, or more commonly, get a vector with which we can calculate the player's distance. Speaking of distance, We'll take a quick step away from arithmetic operations and instead talk about how to calculate the length of a vector. Thankfully, Pythagoras has figured this out for us, and the same way you find the hypotenuse, the length of a vector can be calculated pretty much the same as if we had a triangle with side lengths x and y. Square x, square y, and add them together, then take the square root. That's the length of the vector, and if the vector we're calculating is the result of subtraction, then it's the distance between the two objects. Moving back to operations, I'm going to skip multiplication for now, and instead opt to show division, as it ties in nicely with the length we just learned about. Division differs from what we learned about addition and subtraction, in that, instead of, say, adding two vectors together or subtracting two vectors, we're instead dividing a vector and a number. If we have a vector a and a number s, which we will call the scalar, the resulting vector is the x and y of vector a individually divided by s. This essentially shrinks the vector, unless of course we're dividing by a decimal number between 0 and 1. Bringing back our length from before, if we divide a vector by its length, we end up with a vector pointing in the same direction, but it instead has a length of 1. This is useful for finding the direction between two objects and having a vector cross a consistent length rather than just covering the entire distance. The resulting vector actually has a special name in this case, since it's now just a direction. That name we give it is normalized. So if you ever hear a vector described as either a normal vector or normalized, that means it has a length of 1. Division has a few use cases, but it's most often used alongside our last operation, multiplication. Multiplication is much more in line with division, in the way that it involves a vector and a scalar. I'm sure you can figure this out, but vector a multiplied by scalar s will produce a vector whose components are a's components times s. The resulting vector will also have length equal to a's length times s, which is useful for turning a normalized vector into any length vector. And that's it. That's all the math you'll be learning in this video. However, I do feel like it would be a bit boring to leave this here, and I think it would be quite nice to end on an example of some sort. 
While I could create a player script in Unity and show off all the different things, I think something a bit more visual and appealing to those outside of game development can really sell the point that these simple mathematics can create something amazing. So let's make something together. We'll approach this in a code agnostic way, so regardless of what language you're comfortable with, you'll be able to translate this into code. Rather than show you the final product first, I think it'd be cool to set up the rules together and then reveal it at the end for a real feeling of awe. We'll start by defining what I'll call a particle. It's a simple dot and right now it holds a single vector with an x and y, which represents its position. It's a bit boring, so we'll add another vector to the particle, which will represent its velocity. Every frame, or set amount of time, we will add the velocity and update the particle's position. Unfortunately now it just moves off toward infinity, so perhaps we should add something to pull it back towards the center. Let's define a black hole as also having a position vector. In every frame, we'll first subtract the black hole's position from the particle's position, which will give us a vector pointing from the particle to the black hole. We'll label this vector A. We can calculate the distance between these two, store it, and normalize vector A, which we'll call direction. This is just a vector with length 1 that points towards the black hole. If we take this direction vector and divide it by the distance, we will get a force vector, which is kind of how gravity works in real life, with a few creative liberties. If we add this force vector to the particle's velocity every frame, this is where things start to get interesting. We can see that the particle is sort of orbiting the black hole. Where this really becomes impressive is if we put a bunch of particles and have them all use the same rule. Remember, this was all created using the simple vector mathematics we discussed earlier. Hopefully this is a good introduction to vectors. Thanks for watching, and thanks for getting just a bit smarter.